Data is King, and today I'm on my way to go and see Matty at the AI Healthician Studio. So, what we're going to be doing, I'm going to get a body fat scan done, I'm going to get a resting metabolic test done, and a VO2 test done. Matty's going to walk us through each stage of it, each process, and, on, and tell us a little bit more as to why this is helpful, and hopefully the practicalities of what this can mean for my training. I'm currently 15 weeks out from the World Championships and I'm going to set a baseline here today and try and understand a little bit more about how I can improve, what data I need to be following and what information I need to be processing to take that next step. I love and I'm known for diving into the data, but today we're going to get more information than what a wearable can give you. Including biomarkers, which is an indication of how my body uses food for fuel, which I find really interesting. As I mentioned, Marcel will be able to give us a little bit more insight on this. Let's get in there. Yeah, nice one for coming into Jay. So first of all, what we're going to do is we're going to get you on the 3D body scan, which is going to take 21 precise measurements across your body, so we can see where you're at. Um, your body composition is at basically all through your legs, arms, body, and we'll get your body fat percentage and your lean muscle mass percentage as a weight and a percentage of your a whole body. Um, we're going to do a omega test. Um, because obviously the balance between our omega-3 and 6 can cause a lot of inflammation in the body. So the more omega-3 we have to 6 can reduce inflammation, which is going to be massive to you yeah, yeah. your recovery time in, in between big heavy sessions and competition. Nice. Um, and then we're going to go into a resting test, which is going to involve you just lying down on the floor at rest for 10 minutes so we can see what your body's doing in its rested state. That all sounds good to me. That all sounds, that all sounds yeah, good. that's the easy one. Yeah, yeah, I like that's the easy one. Then it gets uh, a little bit more difficult when we go onto the treadmill. Okay. Um, we're basically going to create a, pr a fitness protocol for you. We're going to see what you can maintain 110 beats a minute for comfortably. And then we're going to start at that pace and we're going to up it one kilometre a minute every minute up until failure. And that's going to give us a wide range of uh, measurements to see what your body's doing, what limitations you may possibly have, which could be holding your back, which could take your performance to the next level. Amazing. Okay. I, th I, I ate last night like it was my last meal for like, a, like two days. So I, was, I was gutted. I was like, I've only had water today. Well, yeah, yeah, water's good. I've got, me, I've got me build up for when I can't have it as soon as I'm finished. Like. Personally, on the stike here, the body composition, we use the Harris Benedict method, which is what most, most people use for tracking calories. It's just a mathematical formula based on height, weight, age, and gender for working out your calories. Now, that's the maths, then when we go onto the mask, we're going into the science, okay. and that's showing us, based on your oxygen exchange ratio, exactly how many calories your body is consuming at rest. So we get a specific marker, and then when we get on here, we can see exactly how many calories you're using during exercise, and in each zone. Yes. So we can work out uh, a fuel plan, based on if you're doing some longer stuff, maybe not so much for the high rocks, because it's just your, it's within an hour, um, but we can see what percentage of uh, carbs you're using per zone, per minute. So you can get a good idea when you're doing your longer sessions, if I'm yeah. using nine calories per minute in zone three and I'm doing a, or I'm doing a zone two run, then I know what I need to be fueling yeah. with. More so for the longer distance stuff like yeah, that. It's usually yeah. about half one for me, if you're fair, but it's kind yeah, of good to know how you fuel. You say everything under an hour is good, we're good to go with just water, and then once we start going over an hour, then we yeah. start looking at uh, a fueling strategy. Yeah, well, that makes sense to me, yeah. But, okay. These measurements are based on the, have you ever been on the deck set in the university? Dexter scanner, where you lie down. No. So that's the most accurate um, form of measuring body fat. Um, we have most people say, oh yeah, I'm like 5% body fat, 7% body fat. And I'm like, well, that's not physically possible, really. Um, it's, it would be dead, it would be dead at that rate. Um, I'd say, like, Mo Farah, the likes of these um, elite long distance runners, are probably about 10 11%. Mm -hmm. um, I would have thought I was about 10 11%, yeah, or maybe, yeah. maybe I'm not. You probably won't be. <laughs> you'll, probably, you'll probably be about 14, 14 to 18%, okay. something like that. Um, so, this is based on the DEXA and using an AI algorithm from uh, against DEXA scans to Welcome take up the 6,000 of Im images um, in the 40 seconds it takes to spin you around, and it can put together like an accurate. Uh, assessments of what body fat and lean muscle mass we have based on like where you where your body's stored and your, your body shape. Okay, so we're gonna go uh, clench your fists there and just come out of touch a little bit higher. That's it. And just hold still, look perfectly straight ahead. It takes 40 seconds, it's gonna spin you down. Two, one. Scanning your body now. 
please hold still. Oh no. So this is where the balance tests from. So this is a Scandinavian based nutrition company. Um, it's all test based nutrition. So we use this blood test first of all to see what your omega levels are. That's the flagship product what they use. Uh, it's called the balance oil. So basically, if you're taking omega, th omega 3 supplements. Oh no, oh, you're making me think I should already. Yeah. So most omega 3 supplements. Um, aren't really doing us any good because once okay. the yeah. once the omegas to derive from the fish it starts to become rancid and it's just put in a capsule and it's it's not preserved so by the time we consume it our body starts to reject it and the idea of an omega-3 tablet is to, is for our cell health it's yeah. to reduce inflammation in the cell get into the cell itself and make that sort that balance out between omega-3 and 6 and put our omega-3 index up now ideally as an athlete, we want to see, well for anyone really, but as an athlete more so, for optimal recovery, we want to have our omega-3 balance at 8% or above, um, and we want to have our omega-3 to 6 balance at 3 to 1. Now, most people, it's hard to, most, I haven't seen anyone who's actually in balance without taking the oil to begin with, uh, because you'd have to be eating the equivalent of like one fresh line caught fish daily, which just isn't really sustainable, because it, one finding it to cost yeah. um, and then we wouldn't actually recommend you to eat a piece of normal salmon every day from the supermarket because the mercury contents and the way <coughs> the, the, f it's, the food's farmed so, so yeah but we'll do the test first basically it's just a fingerprint test um, on some uh, blood spot paper and then let's get sent off to an independent lab um, and analysed coming back in a couple of weeks to get the results so um, yeah Come on. Okay, that's great. On the next one. Cheap at the blood. <laughs> okay. Oh. Easiest test you'd ever do? The shavasana. <laughs> that's from your table, isn't it? Yeah. It's <laughs> right. So I want to get, get this heart rate monitor on first. Oh, well, it's, oh. <laughs> no, down, down. Yeah. I think we're in. So we're looking at our fuel, primary fuel sources, so um, at rest we want to be looking at about 75% fats to carbs ratio. Um, this indicates that we're using fats as our main energy source um, and we've got a good fat burn efficiency. This is what we're looking for and this is low. Um, we look at, let's see, do some like uh, increasing fats in the diet, um, reducing carbohydrates, doing some zone 2 training, some zone 5 training. Um, just getting that fat burn efficiency so we can use that as our predominant fuel source. Okay mate, that's the easy bit done. Just sat there laying, just thinking about food. <laughs> <laughs> so um, yeah, we'll take the mask off for a minute. Think about carbs. So we'll get you on the treadmill, straight on the treadmill, the, the heart rate monitor will link to this. So we want to get you up to about 110 beats a minute and see what we can. That's going to be the starting pace for your protocol. Your starting pace, so we're going to come in 8, eight kilometres. We're going to do 3 minutes at 8 kilometres. Okay. Um, warm up. And then we're going to go into the test, 9 minutes. Then we're going to do increments of 1 kilometre uh, an hour every minute on the minutes up till failure. Then when you're done, we hit the stop and then we see, have you with the mask on for two and a half minutes to see what your recovery rate's like. Okay. I have to just put time for this. Put 
predict where people get to because sometimes some people have a really low heart rate and they have so they start off at a high a high um, speed like yourself but they're not particularly fit so I have to put them up in like lower increments so I might do it in like 0.6 kilometers a minute um, we're starting at 8 kilometers a minute so we're three three minutes warm up out of curiosity, my watch says 57 is my VO2, so let's see, let's see what... That usually under predicts, yeah, so we'll be over that, definitely. Ability exchange ratio is good. I'm going to the one the one night. I'm going to go to the one night. I'm going to go to the one night. I'm the Change rates. The oxygen's always higher to start with. Carbon dioxide. That was a big up. Seeing going into a zone five, you can see that that uh, respiratory exchange mix from. He's, he's getting a lot less oxygen in now, and he's breathing a lot more carbon dioxide out. This is very high levels. Doing good. That was a good test, that. Uh, so we want to see, don't talk, you just concentrate on your breath, you don't want to disrupt that. So 172, I think we peaked that there. So we're just going to give it two and a half minutes and see how quick your, your heart rate comes down. Well done, mate. How did that feel? Yeah, it was alright. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> was too bad. <laughs> that was a good uh, well. So what happens now is um, the results get sent straight over to uh, Stanford in America. Uh, the, uh, the metabolic analyzing team will review that data and they'll uh, send it over to us. Uh, it takes about 24 hours usually um, to come back. And then they put into so this is like the data. This is all your all your data that they'll receive, and then they'll put it into a, an easily readable PDF uh, report for us, which we can go through. And then I'll come and see you. Meet up. We can meet up for a coffee or come see in the gym or whatever, and uh, we'll go through them in more detail so I can explain it. Um, but yeah, this is what you're going to get from your your resting. We're going to see what your metabolic rate. Metabolic fitness is what your predominant fuel sources are at rest, fat burn efficiency, heart and lung fil uh, health at rest, breathing and cognition, uh, and then the big one at the end, the VO2 max score, which I think you did, you did well there, so I'm interested to see what your score is going to come back at. We're going yeah. out in about 24 hours. 24 hours, yeah, I should have a back by the end of the day tomorrow. Nice. So uh, I'll be in touch, I can send you the detail, I'll send you the reports over as a PDF. And then we can either do a zoom 
or we'll catch up face to face. Yeah, it'd be great. great. A chance for you. Definitely. Brilliant. <laughs> so, it was fun. Yeah. yeah. Good to know. We'll find out. So looking forward to That's seeing where, where to land that chart. That's it. Yeah. All the data in it. That's what it's about. And yeah. then the good thing with this is we can test and retest. And when you've got that, you can just see improvements. Everywhere, and that's a, it's a, it's a big thing in it when we, we can just like whether it's the body composition, seeing whether we're looking for changes, adaptations to our muscle uh, due to training, or whether it's on the machine, whether we see any limitations with your respiratory side or the cardio side, we can do specific working on it, and then we can come back in and retest and yeah. prove that what we're doing is working. Yeah. Well, um, what we're going for is going the right approach. That's it. Yeah. All of the days as well. Anything like that is always going to be interesting. Because you know, so we work working blind, is there? We might as well have an idea of exactly what we're going for and be specific. Because like you say, as soon as you cross into that zone three, unless you're going to race it zone three, you want to be either going all the way up, getting in that four or five, and really pushing those, those boundaries, all the way down and working on the aerobic, the aerobic system and making sure you're getting the benefits out of that. It's stuff in between. That's it. I mean, we do the tempo stuff now and then, but I mean, like, we want to be... a uh, really hone in on that zone too and then so you know what the, the, the best coaches in the world now it's the 80 20 method isn't it so 80 percent we want to be in our really easy zone two yeah. and then 20 percent really hard no yeah. in between really really hard and really really easy yeah so and i think we're probably especially in the world i feel very guilty of living in that gray zone because it kind of feels like where we're going to race yeah and it's quite hard to to work out exactly where you're meant to be and you can look at your data you look at your um your your heart rate stuff and things like that, I know what, what you race at, but actually when you're training, you probably want to be above it, yeah. and significant below it, and every so often, go in it, just yeah. to like, you know, test, test where it's at, see where it's at, yeah. feel, feel yeah. it, but actually, to push that, we want to be over it, and to get more efficient in it, we want to be below it, yeah. so it's trying, it's making sure you know where those those areas are, so you can dial it in, it's not just for me, it's for any person who can who wants to go and race, or do, do a competition, to have that data, it's that kind of thing where they can go, I think we put a plan in place now. It's not just a roughly working off this. That's it. That's it. We can be specific with it, and that's the key. To right. So we went to see Matty. We got our test done, VO2, um, blood works. Told me about all different measurements and all that kind of good stuff. Which, to be honest, yeah, was really interesting. I got a. Um, from the practical side of it, um, the O2 was something like 64, which apparently is very good, but doesn't mean a lot in practicality. Like, there's not much I can do with that. Doesn't translate into something that I can go and get um, measure against while I'm training. Now I can go back and retest to see if it's improved, which we will do. But in terms of when I'm out there looking at me watch and Planning my sessions, Basically going to be programming, doesn't mean a great deal. So, what else did we get? So what I did get told, which is really interesting, is actually my VO2 uh, and the amount of oxygen that I take in, my respiratory system, is actually pretty weak, which is not good. Um, my max output is actually pretty weak, but my breathing isn't very strong. I need to learn to use my diaphragm more, I need to do some respiratory exercises, I need to try and build air capacity, the amount of blood going around my um, going around my system while I'm training to be a stronger athlete. Now, that's something I would never have considered. It wasn't on my radar. So, it's, uh, so what I'm doing about that, what's, what can I actually do to improve that? Massey's given me a little device, I think we've seen it on the video, um, that is basically a lung trainer. So it makes it like resistance, like doing weights, like anything. A little bit of resistance while breathing. And I'm on an app, and it gives me some exercises to do while doing it. It's actually really tough. I had to do 30 breaths the other day. I had to stop after like 10. I was like, oh my God. Couldn't get it in, couldn't get the air in. So I'm trying to build that lung capacity. So when I'm working hard, my body's more efficient at getting that oxygen and getting that blood around the system. Which should be a big difference. So that's really exciting for me. And then we also looked at things. I love a good one, that was for me. I had a lot of good, a lot of positive in there, you know. And also, you got to think, if I'm not good at breathing, which I've been doing for a while now, so you'd think I'd be all right, sorry. Um, and I'm still doing as well as I'm doing. 
if I can improve these things, there's room for growth, there's room for improvements. If I had to come out and everything would have been like Jay, you're smashing it. Every one of your levels is fantastic. I'd have been like, I'm at my ceiling, which means I'm not and I've got room to grow. So another one that was quite bad, I was disappointed at the time, it was a bit of a blow when you first get the results, was um, the way I'm using my food, my nutrition for my training. So apparently my system, I'm like a car burning machine. Sounds and sound that bad, but actually you only have about 2000 calories worth of carbs to burn in, in one go. And the sooner you start using them, the sooner you run out. Whereas fat stores and using fat to fuel your, your, your training, there's infinitely more uh, reserves there, a lot more to be able to go at, to be able to go, uh, to be able to train. So I've got all these fat reserves I could be using, but because I'm not training in those zones, because I'm not working at that level, and I'm not fueling and like, eating in the correct way, I've got right to my carb stores. So especially if anything longer, I mean, it will come into play in the uh, high rocks because you know, as soon as you get to that like 50 minute mark, I'm really going to be gassed out because I've used my supply up. Now, if I was going longer, if I was doing more of a half marathon, a marathon, going back to my Ironman or ultra, ultra, uh, ultra marathon days, it'd be even more of a factor. But the high rocks is still a factor and it's still something that's really going to affect the back end of my race. So, I need to get more efficient at that. And there's two ways of going about it. It's really about hitting those. I hit that, that base training and building that engine up like that get more efficient at burning fat for fuel but also for me which is more important because I do a lot of base training because I think it's important is your diet and I assess my diet and look at it my fat levels are quite low on the diet side of it so, so it's changing that diet as well for me so which is really important because I do I track my macros I track all my calories I try and make sure I'm in that right spot but by tweaking those macros a little bit I'm just try, tracking those nutrients and changing the percentages that I'm trying to hit every day. I could see a significant improvement. So I've done that. Um, that's something I'm starting to implement. I'm going to take a little bit of a while to see the effects of that. But I'm really excited about that possibility of being able to tap into that fat store and start using that for energy earlier in the race. So come the back half of the race, I can feel a little bit of a benefit. So what I've done there is I've increased things like I'm eating a lot more, um, a lot more fatty foods, so avocados, I get a lot more like wall, uh, walnuts, cashew nuts, um, chai seeds, um, all these kind of things I'm building into my diet, which previously wasn't really there. I was fo so focused on protein levels and protein intake that I wasn't focusing on that side of it. But a lot of good stuff, a lot of positive came out of CMRC, I found that really helpful. I'm gonna go back just before Worlds and try and see if I've made those improvements. I've set the baseline now, so we'll see where we're at. Try and make these, try and stay consistent and make these improvements and go from there. So, really benefit, very really, uh, really beneficial day. And now, 5K. I thought you were going into that cone then. That would have been a good start, wouldn't it? So, uh, what are we doing today then? We are doing. A local, a local 5k. Mosley Harriers, they put it on first of the month, first Saturday of every month. They get out, they put it on, just donations to the club. Um, yeah, it's really good, so it's a nice flat course. I've been saying a little bit more for High Rocks, a little bit longer distance session, getting ready for that road to the world. So an hour, you know, hour and a half even to have the, um, training zones, but when this comes up, it always... I was on it for a little while, I'll be honest, but it's one of those. See where we like to that, see, uh, see if I've got any speed, any power in them, and just go on and laugh. There's a good group of people who turn up and say, it's something to do on a Saturday morning. It's just test the legs, I get in the gym later. Got some squats to do, but just wanted to uh, just test, see if we've got any speed left in the legs. So let's have a little go, see where we're at. Anything under 17, I'd be made up with, but who knows?
Jeff. How's that, lads? Yeah. It's tough. Yeah. It's fast kids down in front of you. I'll be honest, I wasn't expecting to be in third place. I was. It's a bit, uh, it's a bit lonely, to be honest, yeah. Like, it's nice to be in a draft and to be people settle people and work with them, but I was on my own the whole way because I couldn't, I couldn't keep up with them. Yeah. Well, there, lads. Okay, so 5k down. I was speaking to Lisa on the start line and she was asking me, when was the last time you've done this? And I was like, oh, I don't know, but last time I've seen you, I haven't, I haven't done it for a while. She went, last time I see you, James, was before you went to Vegas. I was like, for the World Champs last year. So, I don't know, oh, 10 months ago. So I kind of didn't realise that it's been a while since I've done a 5k. And, but you do get used to it, you get used to that pain. and. It's a, it's a tough one, but it's not really high rock specific. I wouldn't recommend it if you're getting ready for, for high rocks, but yeah. it's always good to mix it up and throw it in every so often. So just it's a bit of a test for me. So I ran um, 16.04 on the watch, which is actually a PB for me. So that's, you know, it shows the strength works working. It shows um, the hard efforts are coming together. Even the tempo work for high rocks, so it's all come together. When you see 1604, slightly disappointed that it wasn't 1559. I had no expectation of getting anywhere near 1604 today, but then being that close, they always want a little bit more. So, yeah, I was really pleased with that. Um, I spoke to a few of the guys, and everyone said the course was a little bit long. So, I don't know what my time is officially on the uh, on the on the results, but it's probably you know. 16.45 maybe, 16.50 uh, So, not too sure but I think everyone there today was um, pretty consistent with the course being just over 5k so going off the watch 16.04 I'll take it all day, it's a pretty um, it's a pretty good start to the going into this next phase of training into this season so getting ready for that for the world champs so good day, good start to the day I'm going to head over to the gym later this afternoon, get some squats in, really build up power. Right now, probably will jump in the ice bath, get some good food down me, recover. Until the next time.